So when they say Maputo Protocol, 20 years ago, they decided to actually come up with a document that can actually articulate what all the African women and African girls, all our rights should be about. So that's, what, that's what's called Maputo Protocol. Maputo is a very unifying legal instrument. It has been ratified by most African countries, means it's something that each and every young girl can use. Uh, just a few countries in Africa that we are hoping will get on board. Every time you ask for something and you have got the backup of a legal instrument calls people's attention. When you want to speak to a policymaker and you say, look at this, you have ratified this document, and I need for sexual and reproductive health rights to be part of the curriculum. You have got something to back you up. And once you tell girls, uh, speak up for yourself, you're not telling them, say this. You're telling them, look at your life, look at the gaps in your life. And these are the tools that you can use to advocate for those gaps to be filled in by policies. Statistics show that um, three in every five women have faced GBV in their lifetime. It's something that happens on a daily basis. Patriarchy is still very, very um, real. Um, we still have girls who are not able to access education. We still have girls who cannot make decisions over their body, who cannot even decide the destiny of their, of their lives. They don't have power. When we were coming up, they were really difficult. You, you, you receive it, you don't have the opportunity to play around boys. That's what makes some of us. Now, we're not able to get in contact with men to express ourselves, not because we're into the person, but just because we want to be friends with the person. But to come around you, talk to you, for all of the be friends, it's difficult because coming up was not allowed to be close to boys. You know, one thing about um, human rights and women's rights in particular is the fact that you don't wait to be given things. You have to claim things. <laughs> The Maputo Protocol in defining a woman, the woman includes the girl child. So the protocol is not only relevant for women, it's so relevant for the youth of this continent, and that I mean the, the, the girl child and the youth of this con continent. And I think that um, from my interaction with these young people, I am really inspired and impressed with the dynamism and the level of awareness and the level of participation at this level. And as we always say, the future is in the hands of the young people, but we also say the future is now. You don't sit. You don't sit because our guiding star is we want to impact the lives of African women. It's taken us 20 years to get to today, where 44 countries have ratified. Uh, but we know that the protocol is yet to impact the lives of women and girls in this continent. I really appreciate what uh, Feminet is doing in raising awareness on the rights of women in the continent, in harnessing that collective voice for enabling women to be able to shape especially regional and international policy. And now the work they are doing within the continent, like equipping the young women with the information and the knowledge that is going to actually help us pass the baton to them to be able to promote and safeguard women's rights in the continent. That is work that is very important. We have the world learning from us as Africa. So the notions that um, women's rights is an African is a notion, it's a myth, it is not true. We have the resources, we have the abilities. We are the ones who are telling the world what it means to be and to have women's rights. When it comes to women's rights violation, it's not, it doesn't, it's not a respecter of any boundaries or walk of life or to say, because you are poor, your rights are violated more than the rich person or the affluent person. Especially when it comes to violence against women. I keep telling people that when it comes to violence against women, the people who are poor and come from the rural communities tend to be even more empowered than those of us sitting on that panel. Imagine the special reporter on the rights of women and memory as the executive director of Femnet. <laughs> and my sister here being violated. Where do you shout? Where do you scream? Sometimes you're even scared. <laughs> you're even <laughs> embarrassed to raise it as an issue. So it happens at all levels. 
Hello, my name is Laura Jatnitich. I am only 14 years old. I am here to celebrate the Maputo at 20. Imagine, I wasn't even born when the Maputo Protocol was being adopted. I am here at the African Girls and Young Women's Festival, hosted by Femnet, to speak for myself. Hi, my name is Felicity Feleke. Did you know the median age in Africa is 19? So most of us who are girls and young women were either not born or too young to contribute when the Maputo was first adopted. So I speak for myself is a campaign that um, in, the, in one of the programs that we lead um, in a consortium called She Leads. The aim or the objective of this She Leads program is to ensure that we increase the sustained influence of girls and young women in decision making and also we, there is also transformation of social gender norms in both formal and informal institutions. Nobody has to talk on my behalf or say something other than me. Like, I know myself better. You don't know me. So I speak for myself means I tell my own story. I speak for myself means empowerment. Like, I own my space. I speak for myself, but it doesn't stop on me, but it's also helping out to the other adolescent girl that is not here on this platform that I am. So it means that I am a great leader and I'm leading and I'm moving forward and I'm leaving a legacy. Yeah. Girl power. power. She leads away. away. I hear you loud and clear. From a feminine lens, we make sure that these girls literally speak for themselves. We actually just help them to cascade this information. And that makes Feminet very distinct and very unique. We would have otherwise told them what to say and then say it for them. But I speak for myself changes everything. It gives them that opportunity to speak for themselves. It gives them the platform, but most importantly, it acknowledges that their voice cannot be replaced by anyone, whether statistics, whether another story, whether another feature, or whether another report. Every generation, we are constantly standing on the shoulders of the previous generation. The way we frame the stories of girls and young women, we have heard many, many, many times people say beneficiaries girls and young women as beneficiaries or just working with them as tokenists because they don't see girls and young women as people who have knowledge yet it is the girls who are living that life i am sure you have seen even on on tv when people are having discussions on teenage pregnancy have you ever seen them um interview a teenage mom they don't why but why does it mean that we will see men discussing about it, policy experts discussing about it? Why not invite that teenage mom and ask her what happened, what happened, where is it, is this happened? And you will be shocked by the number of, you know, by the, 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 the wealth of knowledge that they have, because they have a lot to say. So at the heart of this program is girls and young women. So my takeaway today has been like, it's okay to be a woman, it's okay to be a girl, it's okay to be a young girl with disability. The fact that Maputo is very ready to defend girls is one thing that has given me confidence. It, may, it gives me self-awareness that when I'm, I'm walking out here, I'm free and I feel proud to be a woman and to be called a mother at the same time and a student. Maputo Protocol. Each country has to sign to help the young girls and women. I think that's the best thing for young girls and women in Africa. So I would suggest in these networks or sub-networks that we create, that we collaborate with different countries because it's exciting and motivating to know that these different issues are shared and there are many young girls and young women working towards their rights in different, across the continent. Je suis Chantal Kalingo, je viens de la RDC. En fait, mon message a été toujours, les, les femmes doivent diriger. Alors, si les femmes doivent diriger, on doit commencer à former la jeune fille. Parce que si la jeune fille n'est pas formée ou informée de ce qui se passe, elle ne sera pas capable de diriger. Mon message est que les femmes doivent diriger. She leads. Et d'autres personnes, d'autres filles qui sont encore inconscientes, elles retrouvent la place.
confiance après avoir été formé et informé afin de contribuer à la chose publique. I think in the future, the young women should be able to enjoy their freedom. They should be free people, they should not be oppressed. They should be able to speak at any time, given any opportunity. They should not always shy away. They should be open-minded also. Be open-minded, open to learning. Learning, unlearning, and relearning. I affirm even the work that Feminet is doing. A reminder on whose shoulders we are standing on and the fact that we have to strengthen our own shoulders for the ones who are coming to step on them. So we did what we could. Now, as we are no longer young, and so we are handing over to you. You are young, you are energetic, you are innovative. I'm sure you can come up with very eh, funky advocacy strategy. There's technology now. I'm sure that take it up from there. So I would ask the girls to get into those spaces, to ask for invites. And sometimes the invites are not very forthcoming. You need to disrupt spaces. So you create exclusive spaces for girls like what we have and invite our sisters, our older sisters, and ask them to teach us uh, what, what it is that they are doing and how we can come in. What now from this, that Girls and Young Women Festival, the conversation has been, or what the girls have been asking, what is next? How can they remain connected? So I see the, 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 the campaign be trans, being transformed or evolving into a movement. So as we are here to celebrate Maputo at 20 in the African Girls and Young Women Festival, we are here to speak for ourselves. And we have five demands. Bonjour, moi c'est Fatma Nana Moulet Traoré. Le langage utilisé dans le protocole de Maputo doit être inclusif et représenter notre diversité en tant que fille et jeune femme car nous sommes toutes différentes et uniques. My name is Alice Ferry Mombere and we demand to be included in all the decision making process and advocacy in the national, regional and the global level from the beginning and not just as a token of charity. My name is Adelaide Dede Abedou. Did you know that online violence and cyberbullying affect young girls and women the most. It means that when opportunities and information are shared on these platforms, these young women and girls get to miss out. And that is why the Maputo Protocol needs to address online safety and security. Bonjour, je m'appelle Mama Sampi, j'ai 20 ans, ce qui signifie que j'ai le même âge que le protocole de Maputo. Nous demandons la mise en œuvre des engagements du protocole de Maputo, sans excuses, sans délai, sans promesse. Nous vous voyons lorsque vous ne respectez ni ne protégez aucun de nos droits en tant que jeune femme et jeune fille africaine dans toute notre diversité. Why don't you report your work on the Maputo protocol? We demand financial commitments from governments in financing the commitments made within the Maputo Protocol. Put your money where your mouth is. I speak for myself. 